I can't believe he got Arlecchino. It should have been, been me, not him. him. It's not fair. Hey, yo, dev stream starting. Dev what now? Warframe's dev stream? Where the devs show us the new things that are about to come? Did you just say, come? Wait, wait, wait. When is this stream happening? About 5 minutes from now, but with how slow you fucking edit all these videos, it's probably been weeks from the viewer's perspective. <laughs> Dev streams are an important part of the Warframe experience. It's the Genshin special program before Genshin released. But instead of every 6 weeks, we get one every month. And instead of waifus, we get depression. <laughs> The stream usually covers the different updates and changes that DE is cooking up at HQ and would down. be releasing that month or the month after. So it's a very exciting part of being a Warframe player. Unless they announce some nerfs, of course. Oh god, the nerfs! Oh Anyways, if you want a full rundown of the most important things that happened in April 2024's dev stream, then you've come to the right place. Enjoy the video. These clips were taken from my stream. If you want to watch me live and tell me how fat I am, don't forget to follow me on Twitch and subscribe to me here on YouTube. Let's talk about new things first. Jade is your 57th Warframe. Wait, 57th? What the fu- With an angelic, almost godly thematic. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy I'm, about I'm about to burst. burst. Described as Stalker's ultimate counterpart, Jade will be heavily equipped with supportive abilities and have angel like wings as her main centerpiece. They also announced that, like Stalker, she will have three signature weapons, giving her the title as the first ever Warframe to have more than two signature weapons. Don't quote me on that, I'm not really sure about that fact, right? She's equipped with Evensong, a bow, Kantare, throwing knives, and Harmony, a scythe, to inversely symbolize the infamous dread, despair, and hate, respectively. An alternative helmet of hers was also shown, which looks extremely cool, can't wait for people to make nightmarish color combinations of this one. We can expect Jade to release alongside her patch, Jade Shadows, sometime before Tenokon, most likely June of 2024. In this patch, Yareli Deluxe is said to be releasing, as well as new Tenogen that hasn't been shown yet. A new landing craft skin, a new game mode called Ascension, a clan event we will talk about later, and enemy scaling and the whole status effect rework we will also talk about later. Because that's a big one. Speaking of big ones. Big news! Protea Prime, she ain't safe. Her Prime access and accessories releases on May 1, with a cinematic releasing right before that. Get your numbers up. I had to get my numbers up. Personally, I prefer the deluxe skin more, but I can see the appeal for Protea Prime's almost regal and royal appearance. For all my day one relic grinders out there, don't forget to max out your syndicates for some juicy relic packs. Protea Prime releases with Okina Prime and Velox Prime too. Will they be meta shaking weapons? Or just trash mastery father. We'll find out on the first of May. Most likely trash father. <laughs> With Protea Prime Axis releasing, Goss Prime's Axis will be vaulted, and you will no longer have the chance to buy his sweet accessory pack. So cop that now if you want it. Speaking of prime accessories, Protea's consists of an alternate helmet and an ephemera. I'm not really a fan of um um balls but i'm sure most of you horny are already salivating as usual the prime accessories pack will include a 90 day affinity and double resource booster that's why he's the goat new clan event for what is a man what has he got belly of the beast with the recent success of the gargoyle's cry event Players have been waiting for the next upcoming clan event 
and it looks like it'll release alongside Jade in her update. Not much is known in this new event and new mission type, Ascension, other than it's gonna revolve around a brand new Eximus type called Jade Eximus. Speculations are already rampant throughout social media, but my theory is that it's an enemy with massive amounts of health and a crap ton of HP region and a unique kill mechanic. Hopefully, it's not something too hard that I'll have to use the forbidden technique. Using Revenant. <gasps> oh my god. Try something new for once, you big. Speaking of new things, four new augments were also mentioned for Protea, Corvex, Sevagoth, and Dagath. We don't have much info about these augments yet, but I would love a, essentially, melee only Wukong Celestial clone for Sevagoth since his fourth ability is his least used and most helminted out ability in his kit. Comment down below what you think. New Doviri decrees to be released on the Jade Shadows 2. Alchemy game mode will be added to the circuit. Ooh wee, now you can be Snape while farming for Incarnons. <coughs> Finally, the current Nightwave season draws to a close as we welcome another. On May 15th, a brand new Nightwave revolving around brand new weapon skin lines called Daybreak are gonna be introduced. That gives you two more weeks to complete your Nightwave. The new Daybreak skins consist of the Glaive, the Sido, the new Core, and all their other variants. There are also new augments in this Nightwave season for the Galaxion and the Sobek, which is a perfect transition for the brand new Kuva, Sobek, and Tenet Galaxion. Thank god it's only two weapons. New Tenogen also released. Mag and Baruch looking sick. Also, the forbidden technique. <laughs> Let's jump into some awesome showcases they presented about Warframe 1999. Being a 2000 baby myself, I'm very excited about all the hype surrounding this year. First off, they showed us some behind the scenes artwork for the early stages of 1999 development. It was cool and all, but what I want to highlight the most is this awesome concept art they have about motorcycles. Now, I don't know how to ride one, but I sure as hell always think about how cool they are. Mom, mom, can you buy me a motorcycle? Bitch, your fat ass can't even balance on a bike. To Will motorcycles be the new mount system they add in 1999? Much like how K drives were to Fortuna and the horses were to Doviri. Hopefully they don't flop as hard as those two and that these bikes could, at the very least, be somewhat comparable to the arc wings. Now that everything important is out of the way, let's talk about the gigantic, massive, humongous elephant in the room, the changes. First off, let's talk about the HP, armor, and armor strip changes. Okay, since you're watching a YouTube video instead of reading about it, I'll assume that you're dumb, like me, and just like me, you need things simplified for you so that you will get it faster. So I'm gonna explain it to you in the simplest way possible and with how I understood it. Please note that I am, again, dumb. And if you want an actual good explanation with all the maths and shit, people like Nightmare Frame, Brozyme, and others probably already have a complete breakdown of these things. So watch their videos, okay? Okay. So currently in the game, when playing against high level enemies, enemies above level 300 or so, Armor Strip is almost always the best way to kill them as fast as possible. However, with how spaghetti coded Warframe is, any armor strip below 100% is essentially non-negligible, useless, since the math doesn't math. Now, with the changes they want to implement, they'll make it so that armor strip is better even if it isn't at 100%. They want it to actually matter this time. To compensate for that, they'll be increasing HP pools of the enemies. Now, with my squirrel brain, I see this change as an absolute win. I mean, with this change, 
more build diversity will be made in the game, right? No longer are you constrained in using a 100% armor strip, but now you can think of the trade-off of more range for less armor strip percentage. Is it a good deal or not? But remember, again, I'm dumb. So take my words as you see fit. Okay, now we get to the other part of the changes, the status changes. Ever since I started playing the game, this table has always been applicable. That was 7 years ago, and I still haven't memorized this yet. If you've played Warframe for more than a year, you might even subconsciously know about this. Grenier is weak to corrosive, Corpus is weak to magnetic, etc, etc, etc. But in reality, it's not. It's a lot more complicated to explain to a new player than to explain how the earth is in fact not flat to a flat earther. With the changes they plan to make, they want it to be a bit easier to understand. They'll now classify weaknesses and strengths based off of the enemy's faction and not its skin type. Finally, no more racism in Warframe. And you know your boy, the simpler it is, the easier it is to understand, and the easier it is to understand, the easier it is to forget. Baby. Overall, I'm quite happy about this change. Hopefully, it goes through. Since Warframe is already hard to describe to my friends, less complexity is better for them to understand it more. And let's be real, we all run viral heat loadouts anyway. Oh